Spring Hill is a great place to live. We've grown quite a bit. We do have a young community here, and, and all of that got started from the GM plant 20 years ago. With a new plant, things were booming. We were working all the time, had a new product. Young families moving in. It was a real exciting time. It was a real vibrant community. GM was a major shot in the arm to the growth of our city. You know, the influx of the people coming into the city was just enormous. It was all farms all the way down Highway 31. And then over the last 10 years, I'd say, the community started to thrive. We had less than 1,000 people in the city when they came here, and we have a little over 25,000 now. The, the plant was the catalyst for all these other businesses coming in. Heads all around. Folks, you're looking at brakes. You know, I moved down here you know, 16 years ago uh, for a better way of life. It's a growing town that's thriving on uh, a big company. Uh, and pushing, you know, more business this way. Uh, it's very important for, you know, for the success of this, this city to, you know, prosper and grow and keep growing. Spring Hill is one of the fastest growing towns in the U.S., so it was just a great place to start a business. So we're really excited to invest all of our energy into starting a coffee house. Everyone that comes in from the plant has all kinds of different characters. Um, they're, they're, um, they come in for coffee, um, mostly stay awake and <laughs> keep going for the day. So This is the American dream. This is, this is a city that has succeeded. The plant sustains thousands of middle class, hard working families. Our vehicle that we, we you know, produce the Chevrolet Traverse, it is world class. When we rolled over into the Traverse, to see it come off that line was just fantastic. We got something new, we're gonna survive. We can build washing machines, we can build anything, any product they give us, but people just wanna work hard, build the best product they can, a world class product, and, and uh, be proud of what they do. And. It makes me emotional to think about it. I am just asking that they continue to look at us as a striving, world-class plant. Membership here is, is very concerned because on a daily basis, we get mentioned in the news media about the consolidation and who else could build this product. And uh, just, it's really troubling. I mean, when you, when you think about it, uh, you wake up every morning with another news report uh, that you may not have a job. The, this plant would not affect just auto workers. Uh, every everybody in our city, in our region, county, in our state is connected to this in some way or the other. I mean, you've got an economic tsunami that takes place when we go down. We we might not be able to be here. I don't know. I would I would love to say that we would, but I think there's such a large number of people affected by that. If that plant did close, there is a lot of people, you know, and my employees' jobs are at risk also. From Pizza Paula's to here, it, it all comes around. Well, Granite City and its people have, uh, this, this, this steel mill's been their staple for forever. They've uh, built this town around this, this particular steel mill, Granite City Works. Uh, we have 1,500, roughly 1,500 employees uh, on the main plant and another 500 on the other side, approximately 2,000 total. It's a sick feeling that, uh, it's like, you got to be kidding me, 130 years this place has operated and never been idled and, and now with 36 years I can't even work. It, it, it was a pretty empty feeling. We opened up in 1956. I'm a fourth generation. We're just a middle class, regular uh, mill town, really. You know, we rely a lot on the mill. And whenever it was in its prime and everything was going, people were standing outside waiting to get in, you know. And, and we were sending orders over there. We had to go orders every day. We'd send at least $100 a day that we would take over to the mill, to the different gates and guys that couldn't come out. And we've lost all that, uh, you know. So, and then on Fridays, we'd do three or $400 worth of orders that we'd take over there. And we've lost all that. 
So I mean, there's a, there was, it's been a pretty big impact. I mean, right now you're in here and this place would be full if it was a regular day and everything was going like it should be. I mean, the uncertainty is the worst part because a lot of people that are laid off, at least they're still getting unemployment and they're still getting money right now. But what's going to happen when that runs out? You can't think that far along because you don't know what's going to happen, especially with that. That hurts us, you know. But I would love to be able to uh, hand it down to my daughter and give it to her and let her take over like I have taken over for the, you know, for my family. So, In terms of this plant being idled now, it becomes more, more troublesome and more concerning in that the plant is shut down as far as it is. We've never seen a cutback this far. We got a large group of our, our uh, employees who their uh, insurance does run out. So this is very scary times. We, we need something done fast. For this plant to start back up, the economy to pick back up, cars to be made again, that I, I can hope that when I am broken down and can't work here anymore that I, I can retire with respect and, and enjoy some golden years as they call them. Yeah, my, my people have been hurting. I've got tons of people that are laid off. The hopelessness, the, the, the when they look at me and they ask me, what am I supposed to do? How am I gonna pay my bills? And, and I don't have anything to say. Being laid off changed my life a lot. Um, Cause at the same time, uh, I've been evicted, everything, you know. Yeah, it's uh, you really gotta, you just feel like you can't do anything. You're just on they're on pins and needles all the time. And I have people that don't have food to eat. I have a serious problem with that. Since we had so many members laid off, we put together a local food bank just for our Dana employees that have been laid off. This is something that's very hard for a person to do, to ask, okay, I do need help. They're sending our stuff over, overseas or $5 an hour. We can't compete with that, I've tried. Americans have proven time and time again over the past decades that we're capable of making the very best products in the world. If General Motors makes the decision to use the taxpayer dollars, if they use this money as an opportunity to basically subsidize the deindustrialization of America, and I think what they're going to, what they'll do is you'll see a lot of plants close up and go away. A lot of communities that are going to be brutally hurt in this process. A lot of Americans that are going to be really hurt. And then when this economy recovers, we're not going to have the manufacturing capability to be able to make the products in this country. It's not just about auto workers. It's about every every job. And I get really emotional when I think about it because I got a daughter that's graduating this year uh, that we're trying to get to college, and. Uh, a few years ago, this wouldn't even have been an issue, and now we're really, we're really concerned about that. It doesn't do us any good if, if, if we, the American workers, can't afford to purchase and buy the products that these companies are producing. To fix this, we have to stimulate our economy, and we have to keep the tax dollars here in the United States. If we don't rebuild American manufacturing, the American dream will be nothing but that, a dream. Why? That's all I'm asking is why? A job is, is pride. I mean, people that can go to work every day and bring food home to their family, that's all we want to do. You know, that's all we've ever done. And uh, 